be on the call today. Thank you. Were you on last week? No, I was not. I didn't. I didn't get a notice last week. I didn't know there was a last week. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we have these every uh, Wednesday at two o'clock and every Thursday, two o'clock Eastern, and every Thursday at uh, seven thirty Eastern. Okay. So, All right. This yeah. one said um, part two. So obviously, last week was part one. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. I'm gonna do Sorry. a. I'll do a. I'm gonna do a quick review. Uh, okay. And, and I, I just realized uh, today, too, that I've only got the audio for part two. So I'm not going to get too far into part two uh, today because I want to get the visual as well because it's very important okay. to us. So, but, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. I'm just going to wait like one more minute here. I'm sure we'll probably get uh, one or two more jumping on here. I usually do, you know, a few minutes late, but uh, uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and pull some things up. So I'm okay, going cool. to go ahead and mute you uh, and... Uh, We'll go from there, okay? Thank you, sure. Right. Thank you, Diane. All right, so welcome to the Coach's Corner, and my name is Scott Grimm, and I, uh, I know uh, Henry and, and Diane are on the call, and great having you two on the call today, uh, and I am one of the coaches here at FundMyHome.org, and, you know, my coaching style is I do more, you know, topical types of uh, teachings and lessons, and, you know, whenever, you know, uh, I'm doing a teaching, obviously, it's something that, you know, God is helping me with as well, and anytime you teach, uh, some something you know you're also being taught as you're doing the preparation work for it too. This particular segment that we're going through right now is uh, from Michael Pink, and Michael Pink is an extremely successful Christian businessman. He's put together uh, a an, an incredible uh, teaching uh, series. Uh, he's got books out and things like that too. But the guy's uh, made hundreds of millions of dollars, and all of his uh teachings are based on on biblical precepts and concepts and uh, it's just extremely valuable information so we were blessed last week to uh, go through the first uh, session by the way this is something that was given to me by one of our lion leaders here richard marks uh that richard uh was able to participate in and recommended this to me and, and i looked at it and i've, I've watched it numerous times taken tremendous amount of notes uh, because it's, it's just good stuff. You know, that's just the way, the way it is. So anyway, um, uh, last week, uh, Michael had shared with us uh, the scriptural foundation for this series here. Uh, and it's really the seven uh, keys uh, to, to, to the secrets uh, or keys from the kingdom uh, principles uh, that really are, from what I'm, you know, learning about it, it's really all about uh, character. It's about la raising our level uh, of, of awareness uh, that would then uh, help us with raising our lens, uh, so to speak. So there's this incredible, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A content uh, that's available to us in the scriptures that are really uh, keys to us being successful. And it doesn't matter if it's in business, uh, in our family life, in our marriage, uh, in relationships, whatever those things might be. Uh, so uh, last week, uh, I, I shared, you know, the first session of Michael's um, content, and he talked about this, the, the secret, one, the first secret, and that's on our character. And that's, you know, he talked about commitment. He talked about gratitude. Uh, with regards to commitment, you know, uh, we're only going to be as successful as is what our commitment level is. And, you know, that's what he talked about last week. And he gave scriptural support for all of that. Uh, he, we talked to them about having a, a spirit or an attitude of gratitude. Uh, and we, we know how important that is. You know, people, uh, you know, a positive attitude and a thankful spirit and, and you know, a spirit of gratitude attracts uh, positive people and people that are, are going to want to, you know, uh, be around you. And uh, when we're thankful for, you know, things and we have an attitude of gratitude, it's contagious. Uh, he talked about that. He talked about uh, having a, a generous spirit and the need to add value uh, in, in the scriptural foundation for that. Very, very important. Matter of fact, I think uh, being a giver and adding value 
uh, to, to someone else's life is the real, one of the real keys to being successful. And the more value that, that we add, uh, the more uh, God in uh, the universe uh, has a way of paying us back. Uh, so uh, that was very much a part of the teaching last week. Uh, and <clears throat> by the way, uh, Diane, if you want to email me, scott at fundmyhome.org, I could send you last week's uh, workshop so you can see it in its entirety. It's that good. You're going to want to see it. So I'm just kind of giving you a brief overview of this, this first secret that he talked about. Uh, then, he, then he talked about the need for us to be teachable. And, you know, I, I like to live under, and I do live under, the, um, the, the concept of always being a student. And, you know, I, I read uh, continuously, uh, mostly the word. I, I listen continuously. Matter of fact, today I spent over four hours as I was working, listening to uh, Napoleon Hill's some of his writings and, and uh, you know, Think and Grow Rich, uh, although I've heard that numerous times, uh, I just want to hear it again today. Uh, you know, so I'm constantly, you know, being a student and, and learning, and that's very important. Uh, and that's what uh, puts us in a position to be blessed, uh, is, is having a teachable spirit. He talked about the need for us to be accountable uh, and, uh, you know, all of the uh, things that come with that, uh, and then to be uh, a, a person of covenant. Uh, you know, our word being our bond. See, these these characteristics we know are, are going to be what uh, enables us to, uh, you know, um, be trusted by others uh, with their money uh, and, and trusted by others with, with opportunity, uh, whether or not they're going to want to participate in what we're doing. Uh, the second secret that he talked about was an area of competence and he, about, you know, in uh, putting yourself in a position to be blessed by uh, sharpening our skills, uh, by you know, uh, and, and again, he gave us scriptural uh, support for all of this uh, by preparation, you know, the work of our hands in our daily walk. Uh, he talked about the three step process in making incremental in, improvements all the time. So, uh, you know, that's that's very, very important that we continue to reflect, evaluate and correct uh, on a daily basis. You know what it is that we did the following day. And he gave us that in scriptural support. Uh, and uh, by the way, all of this. Uh, is this teaching is based on the pattern of the uh, the tabernacle uh, in, in the um, the tabernacle of of God in uh, in which uh, you know was the tent that contained all of the articles uh, of the tabernacle that the Israelites took with them wherever they went. So and, and it's incredible teaching. Like I said, uh, it was a great foundation for us last week. So this week we're going to pick up. Uh, by the way, when we finish this first segment here, and I'm not going to get too far into the second segment, uh, then I'm going to uh, share uh, just a little bit uh, with you of, of some of, some of the new things that we've done here with regards to funnels. So I'm going to give you some some uh, added value uh, uh, today that you'll be able to leave with as well uh, that you might not have got had you not been here. And by the way, I'm certainly one of those that believe that 90% of success is showing up. So you put yourself in a position to be blessed. Success in the life of a man or a woman is that he or she is ready for their time when it comes. And a lot of that preparation is doing like what you're doing now and that's showing up for events like this. So I really appreciate that. Anyway, let's jump right into uh, Michael Pink's uh, uh, teaching here where we left off last week. And I got my share sound on. Everything should be good to go. So here we go. And at the end of this, uh, it's probably about yeah, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to need to jump into the audio, which is the second segment. But here we go. Something. What's this got to do with business? This is a marketing model like you've never seen. And it's a sales model like you've never seen. You have to understand what these things speak of. Woo, it's so good. It's so good. Let me show you. Okay. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. The, sp the word their Lord is, is, is Yahweh. It, it was sort of the national name of God. It was the supreme authority, the highest level authority, the, the big, the biggie. Okay. It wasn't God's my buddy and my friend. It was the Lord God, Jehovah. Okay. Yahweh. It was the, the national name of God. So it speaks of authority. So now in business, I, here's the question. You ready? Where do you have authority? First of all, where do you have authority? See, I have authority in this. I don't have authority in scuba diving. I don't know anything about it. I've tried it in a swimming pool once, and that's as far as it went. I don't have authority in that area. I don't have authority on how to play golf or tennis or a lot of things. But in this, what I'm talking to you about, 
I have a great amount of authority. Second question you want to ask when it comes to sales or marketing is not only where do you have authority, because that's where you're going to do well, is where you have authority. Where do you have that? Oh, this person, this woman, this man, they know what they're talking about. Where is that? And secondly, with whom do you have that authority? It's the second question you have to ask, especially when it comes to marketing, because even though you and I might be authorities in a certain field, if they don't recognize it, it's not going to do any good. I can probably take what I teach right now and take it to the Democratic Convention. And, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people who wouldn't find it too interesting. Right. But I can take it someplace else. They're going to say, wow, this is really awesome. And so you have to know when it comes to marketing, where's my authority? When it comes to sales, where's my authority? And with whom do I have it? Number two, it says the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Well, see, the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil, and evil inflicts pain. So we learn from this that this deals with pain. Well, I'm telling you in business, if you want to help people and you want to solve problems, you got to find out what their pain is. People are far more interested in getting out of pain than making a gain. It's an absolute fact. They're far more interested in get me out. My hand is, my finger is on the red hot stove. I'm much more interested in figuring out how to get that off me, how to get the sliver out of my finger than I am in, in, in buying a new pair of shoes. Okay. And so you, you want to make sure in your sales and your marketing that you're speaking to their pain, which of course necessitates you ask the right questions, which we'll get into in a few minutes. So the spirit of the fear of the Lord speaks to their pain. What is the pain that you solve? What is the pain that they have? And how can you articulate it better, more clearly, more demonstrably than anybody else? Thirdly, the spirit of knowledge. Knowledge is factual in nature, which means you got to know your stuff. You know, I, I really don't like when I'm trying to deal with somebody and, and I'm asking them questions because they're trying to tell me something. I ask them, well, what about this? Jeez, I don't know. What about that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I understand that nobody knows everything, but... When somebody knows their stuff, my, the credibility goes through the roof. And I want that. And you should have that. Become very knowledgeable in your field. Okay? That will absolutely blow your business up in a good way. Number four, the spirit of understanding. Understanding is a function of the heart. The Bible says, <clears throat> basically, without understanding, you're not going to take action. In, in Proverbs, it specifically says, he, he says, I walked past a man who his house, his wall was broken down. There were weeds and nettles growing all over it. And he did not have any understanding. You know why? Because a man or woman with understanding will take action. A man or woman without understanding will not take action. Understanding is a function of the heart and the emotion. If my heart is not engaged, if I don't have the want to here, if I don't have that, I'm not going to take action. It's motivational in nature. And so you recognize in, in sales or in business or in marketing, how can I <clears throat> speak to their heart, touch the emotions, cause them to see? By the way, it's done with pictures, illustrations, and a lot of other ways. Can't open that up right now. Again, this here, this one slide is a whole teaching of itself. But I wanted to give you something so you understand this. Spirit of understanding is motivational in nature. Number five, the spirit of wisdom, which is logical in nature, and it provides justification because, number four, I'm all motivated. I want it. Yeah, yeah, raw, raw. I'm all excited. But, gee, how am I going to explain this to my wife or my boss or my partner or my husband or whatever it is, right? How am I going to do that? So spirit of wisdom, the Bible says in, in uh, Psalm 90, I, I, I'm not sure what verse it is, but it's in Psalm 90. I was going to say two, it might be 10 or 11, whatever it is. It talks about bringing the heart to wisdom. In other words, my heart wants all kinds of things, but I got to bring it to wisdom. If you want to do well in sales, not only do you want to capture the heart, capture their imagination, do that with imagery, with music, with all kinds of ways that speak to the heart, but then give them the logical justification, which is the wisdom. And when you put those things together, you've got a really strong case. Number six is the spirit of might, which is spirit of power, spirit of strength. <clears throat> So what is your strength? What is your point of differentiation? What makes you stronger? Why should somebody do business with you, Bob? Why, Mark, why should somebody do business with you? Well, I'm not asking you to answer me that, by the way. I'm just saying, how are you going to do it? Mary from Arizona. You got Paula in Florida. Uh, how, what is your point of differentiation? What is your USP, your unique selling proposition, or your value proposition? What is that? The spirit of might is the point of differentiation. It's the point when somebody says, you know what? You've convinced me. I need a new whatever it is. Okay? I'm going to get my, I need a new co a computer. I just got one, but, you know, what does it say? I need a new computer. Well, then, 
my, my, my knowledge is, yeah, I, my, my thing's not working right. I need a new computer. My heart goes, wow, I just love the new stuff. That's a great, the justification is, uh, you know, for whatever that is. But now which one am I going to get? And this is where your advantages are. What are your advantages? What are your strengths? What separates you from everybody else? If you don't have that in a way that people understand it, you're at a disadvantage and you shouldn't do that. You should actually have the differentiation, the spirit of might. And lastly, the spirit of counsel, which is where you substantiate your claims. Tonight, I'm not going to go through it, but I got so many testimonials, videos and written and letters and all that, that stuff. It's just way too much. I could spend the whole hour just doing that. But there's lots of that. And, and so you want to have the spirit of counsel working for you as much as you can as well. Some of you are new in business or new in a venture. You say, well, I don't have any testimonials right now. Well, you don't have to have them for you personally. When you're getting started, you can have a testimonial for the kind of thing that you're doing. If you're like Nyla, who, 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 who has a, 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 you know, a product that's pretty unique and say, well, yeah, maybe I don't have any, any customers yet. I don't know if you do or don't, Nyla. I'm just picking that as an example. But you can say, but here's why this product is good. The CDC says this or whatever says that. And you can say, you can sort of borrow that credibility and that counsel and to substantiate your claims. Okay, that's the third secret, right? The, spirit, the, the secret of guidance. And by the way, <laughs> I didn't get to do this as much as I wanted to because the Holy Spirit, I just went through the seven branches. I, I can talk about this all day. We can do a whole day seminar just on this and the various applications. I can probably do a week seminar on this, but just the Holy Spirit is, it will guide you, and it's a very powerful thing. But I wanted to give you something practical that you can apply right now. By the way, is anybody is this helping anybody? Am I, am I barking up the wrong tree? Give me some comments here, if you would. Put something. I see an amen. Sharon, thank you. Just give me some feedback, guys. If, if we're if I'm hitting on on any tracks, um, because I'm trying to give you guys something. I mean, I can walk away with this stuff, and it, it's I don't need it. I've already got it. Thank you, Andrew. Love it. Phenomenal. Paul, thank you. Doing awesome. Mike, thank you. Phenomenal. Love it. Amen. Powerful, helpful. I need to hear this because you know what? If we had, thank you, please keep it coming. Because you see, if if we were in, a, in a, an audience, which I'll be doing in January, I, I, God willing, the creek don't rise, hell doesn't freeze over. We got a big event. I'm going to be doing it with, you know, uh, let's see, with Mike Lindell, um, Andy Ann Pretzel, and, and Byler is going to be on there. Um, see, I got a few others that are some big time speakers. We're going to be doing this event in Tampa. So I'll let you guys know about that. It's pretty, pretty exciting. But when that kind of setting, I can see people, I can read them. And here I'm talking to my computer screen. It's like, is anybody there? Anyway, so thank you for that. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Okay, I'm going kind of fast because I got so much to give you, but I promised I would give you as much as I possibly can. And I'm doing that. Number four is wisdom. Now, it's the bread. You see the table of bread. This was inside that room that had no daylight. It only was illuminated by the candle or the, the, the lampstand, which was the Holy Spirit. And it illuminated this gold table, which had 12 loaves of bread. It was called the table of showbread. It was called the table of his presence or the bread of his presence. And that bread, Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And so the bread is significant. It, it, it signifies Jesus. And Jesus, it's in John 1, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. And so we know that the Word was God, and, 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 and it was Jesus. And so we know that the bread is a type of the Word of God. It's a type also of something else. Because <clears throat> there were 12 loaves, okay, and they were brought in every week. 12 loaves of bread were brought in. Well, those 12 loaves actually were a type of the 12 tribes of Israel, Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah and so forth, the 12 tribes. And what you eat, technically what you absorb, but we become what we eat. And so they would eat this. They would eat the Reuben sandwich. They would eat the Levi. They would eat the whatever it is, you know, uh, Issachar and all the different tribes. They just eat it, eat it, eat it. And so it speaks about mindset, not just that, but it's, it's powerful. But the Word of God not only shows you about mindset, but it'll show you a sales process in the Bible, which I'm going to show you. It, it, it'll tell you about high probability selling, the Moses questioning strategy, the negotiating secrets of Paul, and much, 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 much more. See, level one, we know that, for example, you should negotiate. That's a, I learned from my dad. This is how you negotiate. But I learned from the Apostle Paul in a book called Philemon how to do it God's way and had incredible, mind-blowing, mind-numbing results I mean, stunning results. Got one guy, $1.4 million in pure profit. It took six hours, mind you. It was a long time to write that letter. But it was modeled after the book of Philemon. 
Okay, after the the state had said no for three years, I think it was to their request and every appeal to them, he called me and I said, "Here's how you do it. We're going to negotiate using the strategies of Paul." Can't get into all that right now. It, that's a that's a long teaching all by itself. But anyway, when you learn how to do things God's way, and this is where you get you you take strategy from the scripture and say, "I'm going to apply this out there, and it will blow your mind." And you can literally multiply your income. And I have so much teaching. I'm going to show you a little inside of that, what we've got on that. It's a lot. But I, right now, I'm just going to talk on one, just to give you an example. The 12 loaves has to do with mindset, okay? It's not all that it deals with, but it has to do with mindset. Now, in the Bible, what you may not know, and it's fascinating, is that, you know, God called him Adam, right? And then it was Eve, right? Adam and Eve. But then Adam had a son named Seth, who had a son named Enosh, who had a son named Canaan, and went down the list. And, and <clears throat> when you look at their names, they have meanings, and in the order that they were born in the first 10 generation, it looks something like this. Adam, all the way down to Noah. And then when you look at the Hebrew or the etymology of the biblical names, it will stun you. It's a message. And it reads like this. Man, appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the despairing comfort or rest. That's the translation of the first 10 names of the first 10 sons born in the Bible. And by the way, it carries all the way down. I've done it. I've traced it all the way down to, to Abraham. But I just wanted to show you this thing because we could talk about this for a half hour right now. We're not going to. But I just wanted to show you that names have meanings. And many times there's something extra buried in there. For example, the names of the 12 tribes in, in the Bible, if you put them in their birth order and do the etymology on them, it's very, very fascinating. And it deals with mindset. And other things, by the way. But first of all, Reuben and Simeon were the first two born, which means see and hear what the Lord has to say. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this because God helped me open my eyes on this this week. <clears throat> I was walking to the Lord and saying, you know, just thinking about what do I think about? What I think about and what you think about always begins with something that you have seen or you heard. What do you tune your ear to? What do you turn your eyes toward? Because that's going to determine what you think about. It's going to create images. Images are going to drop down into your heart in the way of pictures. They stimulate emotions, which lead to action. Action is what produces results. Results are how we are measured. The process. So what are you seeing? What are you hearing? How that affects your life is absolutely huge. The study on this is, I don't remember, it's hours and hours on, on this, but I'm just going to give you the, the highlights. See and hear what the Lord has to say, that's Reuben and Simeon. Then cleave to, that's R Levi, cleave to him and praise him, that's Judah, knowing that the judgments or decisions, that's Dan, that you make will lead to a time of struggling where you will wrestle with your decisions, which is Naphtali. So here's a, a story that's being told for business. And then it says a troop, uh, which is Gad, and Gad means troop, it also means good fortune. So a troop or help will come and break through, bringing good fortune with it, which will make you Asher, which means happy and prosperous. And with that breakthrough comes the long awaited reward. That's Issachar means reward. He <clears throat> uh, was the uh, ninth born, enabling you to dwell securely, which is Zebulon, and increase like a fruitful vine, which was Joseph, with authority like a son at the right hand of his father, which is Benjamin. So there's a prophetic thing in the birth order, like, my God, see and hear what God has to say. Cleave to him, praise him, uh, knowing the judgments that you make are going to lead to struggling, because you and I, we, we look at, you're, the biggest test is going to come after you make the choice. You know, you, you think, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And then when you finally make the choice, oh, that's when you get the, that's when the battle really heats up. Anyway, this is a whole deep teaching that I wanted you to know, but I thought, that's worth sharing, so I wanted to pass it on to you guys. Here's something else I found in the Bible. Actually, to be truthful, I found it outside the Bible first, and then I saw it inside the Bible. And it is the idea of following a proven process that cooperates with the, God, the way God wired you and me. The Bible says in John, I love this, the Son, the Son of God, can do nothing of himself except what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the audio going for the second part here, and it'll be audio only. But I'll have this uh, I'll have this available and be uh, making it known for everyone in video form as well. 
doesn't say, well, that's a good idea. I think I'll do it this way. No, you follow the process. How did God do stuff? Okay, well, let's take a look at what I call the easy close sales process. Because my theory is if you need to use a hard close, you're doing it wrong. So it looks like this. E is for engage. It's where you arouse interest. What is it? And of course, believe me, this is a much deeper teaching, but I want to give you this because you can walk away from this and say, well, okay, I haven't got the depth on this, but I got enough to know I can work with this. It's where you arouse interest. Once you got somebody's interest, hey, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. You then go into the assess mode. You ask questions, which I'll break that down for you in a, in a, in a few minutes. Once you understand the answer to your questions, then you can present your solution, which is going to create desire, which then leads to a time typically of negotiation and justification where there's some yielding with based on facts. And then you close the sale. Now, believe it or not, it's modeled inside the scriptures. I'm not going to take the time to go through it all, but it's in the scripture. It's amazing model that's there, the easy close sales process. But let's talk about sales process for a minute. The power of a proven process, 90% of all companies that use a formal guided sales process were ranked as the highest performing. 70% of business forecasts were accurate when using a defined sales process. You see a lot of people say, well, what's your month going to be like right now or next month or whatever? Well, and they come up with a list of possibilities and they, have, they don't have a process. So their, their projection for the next month, the next quarter is way off base. But when you have a defined process, it's highly accurate. Furthermore, businesses with a standardized sales process see up to a 28% increase in revenue as compared to those, those who do not. That's the Harvard review. Let's round it to 30% for easy numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Suppose you <coughs> suppose you're making, let's just use an easy number, 50,000, 100,000, doesn't matter what the number is. We'll say $50,000 a year right now, okay? And you say, well, hey, a 30% increase, that's an extra $15,000 just by having a standardized sales process. But do you have one? Because the fact is nearly 70% of all sales reps do not follow a process, okay? Thing is, if you follow the process, you're gonna make the sales because the process cooperates with how God wired us. Now, when I say that, what I'm trying to say to you is, it, it, by no means am I suggesting you follow a process, you always get the sale. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you'll do a lot better when you follow a process because you're gonna make a lot more sales because it, 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 it flows with the way God wired us. Now that's process. L let's talk about this. How many of you would like to see, learn about high probability selling? I wish I could see your faces. There's too many to do that, but I'm assuming you want high, I, everybody wants that, okay? High probability selling. So where do we learn that? We learn that in the gospels, especially Matthew. It's the, <clears throat> behold, Jesus said, a sower went out to sow. It's called the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. And I'm gonna tell you, you can multiply your income if you understand this and work a whole lot less in the same time. Because Jesus said about this parable, he said, if you don't understand this, you don't understand any of them. This is the most important parable in the Bible. Of course, it has to do with the message of the gospel. I understand all that, but that's all I've ever heard. It's probably all you've ever heard. When's the last time, if ever, you heard it preached about, this is how you make money in the marketplace. You follow the parable of the sower. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go quickly, but I want you to see that it's valid, okay? <clears throat> First of all, you have hard ground, uh, recept, so that's the first kind, of, you remember when he sowed, he says, there was some that was thrown on the hard ground. It says some fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. It was on the pathway, whatever. And so there are hard ground prospects. So what you want to do is you want to avoid the ones that are obvious. See, when I was starting out in sales, they told me to go down the street and call on every business. I was a waste, an absolute waste, but that's what they told me to do. So I did. Then there's the stony ground. You remember that? Some fell on stony places. They did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth. But when the sun came up and they were scorched, they had no uh, root and so they withered away. These are the fickle. These are the people that say, oh, that sounds wonderful. And then they won't return your call, whatever. You gotta find those people and you know, I'm not gonna waste my time on the stony ground, on the fickle. Then you have the third kind, the thorny ground. It says, uh, some fell among the thorns and the thorns sprang up and it choked the, the wheat out. It choked the grain out. These are people with distraction issues, okay? And you're not gonna do well with them unless and until you remove the weeds before planting the seeds. But these are the three kinds of soil. Then Jesus said, but there is this thing called good ground. These are people who are ready to act. And it says, others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some 100 fold, some 60, and there it is again, some 30. Now, what you see is, what you wanna do is plant your seed in good ground, but what you've probably never done is you've not done this. You've not done the math. I've done the math many times and it looks like this. 
17% of the seed produced 84% of the harvest. 17% of your effort can produce 84% of the result. When you learn how to do this, when you learn how to weed out the weedy, when you learn how to not, you know, how to identify the hard ground and not waste your time and not go in the stone again, when you learn how to do that, you can do so much more with so much less time. Then, <clears throat> supposing you got somebody, okay, now you're going to ask the right questions. The Bible says, to answer before listening is a folly and a shame. Did you know that? Did you ever look at Proverbs 18, 13 and say, my goodness, why didn't my sales manager teach me that? No, you didn't. Most, most likely. But it's it's so true because we're taught, I was, maybe you weren't, but I was taught in sales, make your presence, you know, they, they used to say, suit up, show up, and throw up. <laughs> and, and, and so many people do that. They just show up and they just start talking. And it's pretty sad, actually. So let me take you through something. <clears throat> sales reps asking five or more questions. Close 72% more sales than sales reps asking two questions or less. 74% more sales. How many questions do you ask before you start your presentation? This was a study done by the Huthway Corporation. Sales reps asking five or more strategic questions can easily double their sales compared to asking five or more non-strategic questions. Because sometimes people say, hey, Bob, how was the game last night? Oh, it's great. Who won? Oh, really? What was the score? Oh, who scored what? Great. Was the weather warm? Was it nice? Yeah. What did you guys go to eat afterwards? You ask five questions, but they're useless. You ask the right questions. Okay. So now you know you're supposed to ask questions, right? <clears throat> but what questions? What questions? I'm going to give you something here. This, and by the way, what I'm about to tell you is about three hours of training. But I'm going to give you this seed. So those of you who just said, I just I, to give me something. I'm going to give you value. Okay. But I'm going to tell you how it came about. I was reading in the book in Numbers one day, 13th chapter versus, uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah. I think, think that's it. 13th chapter. I have to reflect and see if I got the right chapter in my mind. But anyway, verses 17 to 20. It might be Numbers 33, verses 17 to 20. Anyway, it's in there. And and they were getting, there was some, they had this strategy. They were getting ready to do something. And I, I noticed, wait a minute, that Moses had to have seven questions asked, answered before they would invade Canaan. And I began to study it. And <clears throat> while I was studying, I spent about three days, two or three days on my knees in my office, seeking God over three verses or four verses of Scripture. I presume you do that every day, too. I mean, how else are you going to succeed in business if you're not seeking God? Of course, I didn't do it every day, but I'm urging you to do it, my friend. And so when I saw seven, whenever you see seven in the Bible, seven anything, like tune in. It's like, burr, burr, burr. there's something special here, something divine here, something complete, something whole, something thoroughly deep, thoroughly satisfying. Mm. And so I, I was talking to the president of an HVA supplier. He sold that kind of equipment that you see right there. He sold that kind of equipment to contractors. So let's say you live in, in Miami. It would be Miami Heat and Air or, you know, Aqua Heat and Air, you know, companies that sell air conditioning and fix yours and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so he would sell to them. They would sell to you and me. Okay. He was a wholesaler. And so <clears throat> I came by his office one day. He said, Michael, we've been calling on this contractor. We're going to go see him on, on uh, Wednesday. And we've been calling on him twice a month for six years. We brought him and his crew breakfast, lunch, dinner. He said, I've been to his house for dinner. He's been to my house for dinner. You know, both of us and our wives have gone to movies together. But in six years, I haven't got a nickel's worth of business. You got any suggestions? We're going there Wednesday again. I said, yeah, I just read this. I said, I got seven questions you need to ask him. And he looked at me, and he, as far as I know, he wasn't a Christian. He looked at me like, what do you mean seven questions? I said, well, they're not really questions, they're topics. He said, well, can you write some questions out for me? And I did. Let's see if I have it handy. I don't see it handy. But anyway, I, I have it. It's still with the form from the 90s. <clears throat> I wrote it out. And he took that, and he instead of talking about the ball game or anything else, he asked these questions, Okay. And he came back, and because he asked strategic questions, it opened up things he didn't know, resulting in the guy saying, can you give me a quote on Thursday? And on Friday, 48 hours later, they had a purchase order for $60,000. Now, he was stunned. Six years, twice a month, no business. 
He was practicing the good old boy. If I'm nice enough, long enough, I'm an honest guy. I'm a hard worker and I take you out to dinner. You come to my house. We're friends, but no business. Ask the right questions. Boom, $60,000 order. I was pretty cool. But guess what? He thought there was something to this. He said, I want you to train my entire sales team. So it was the end of March and I got in front of a sales team and I held up the document, wherever it is. And I held it up for them. <clears throat> he held it up rather. And he said, I don't know what this is. He said, I don't know why it works because he didn't know it was from Moses. He didn't know it was from the Bible. I didn't tell him that at that time. And he said, I don't know why it works, but I want every one of you doing it. And they were ordered to do it. And I was paid to train them how to ask the right questions. That I'm going to show you in a minute. And so they went out and they, this was the end of March. They went out in April. The previous April, they'd done 1.2 million in sales. Their goal for this April was 1.3. But instead of that, because they were forced to use this strategy, they went from 1.2 to 1.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and $550,000 increase, 45% increase month over, you know, year over year, just a huge jump. I, and I ran into him, I went over to see him and he said, I said, uh, you know, how to go? He told me and his face was ashen. He, he was, he was dumbfounded. Like how in the world is it possible that using a questioning strategy like this could revolutionize my business? He said, where did you get that? And he was thinking, maybe I learned it from Zig Ziglar or Tom Hopkins or some of the gurus out there, you know, thought maybe that's where I learned it. But that wasn't where I learned it. And I said, well, actually, I learned it from Moses. He would have been less surprised if I just go cocked him. But anyway, that was the story. So I'm telling you, this absolutely works. Now, actually, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the teaching there. And again, I apologize that we don't have the video uh, for that segment, uh, but we will have that next week. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the, the value in this guy's teaching, obviously, because it's coming from the word, is, is really over the top. And, you know, I continue on a daily basis uh, to be, you know, very blessed uh, by the revelation that, that I get uh, from, you know, the study of his word uh, through the variety of different books and, you know, uh, teachers that I listen to, and I, I believe as a coach that the, the greatest thing that I can do to add value to your life is to continue to encourage you and to get you uh, the right content that's going to raise your level of consciousness uh, and raise your level of understanding of, you know, and I, I like to call them laws. You know, there are, there are laws that are put into place uh, by God, okay? Or if you don't believe in God uh, by the universe, whether you like it or not, you know, like the, you know, the law of gravity. Uh, and there, if you follow these laws, this pattern, if you will, that have been laid out, it's gonna lead you to success or to failure. So, you know, that's really what life is all about. It's, it's discovering uh, and learning these laws and then abiding by them and, and allowing the law to to do what it's uh, meant to do. So that's 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 kind of what you know I, I appreciate about Michael's uh, teaching is uh, that and, and again as as a uh, as a leader as a uh, as a coach you know um, I learn every day and you know just like you know the, the questions the seven questions you know i know that seven is the the number of completion it's god's number you know so to speak uh and i, I certainly realize the need to pay attention to that when you run across it in the scriptures but you know to ask those seven questions you know a lot of times in sales like he's talking about you know uh we want to we want to you know continue to talk and share and do things like that and you know oftentimes the smartest thing we can do is just just to be quiet and ask a question and then we're going to find out more information that's going to help us to you know carve a path to, to help us get them what they they want okay and you know so there's a lot of value uh in in what he's uh, teaching us here today so you know i, I appreciate michael uh, this the next week uh like i said i'll have the video to to, to, to it will finish out probably next week uh michael's teaching i do have uh last week's uh workshop uh, or our, our coaching session on video. Uh, I believe it's already been loaded up on fundmyhome.org's YouTube channel. Uh, so, you know, you can find that there, uh, Coach's Corner, Michael Pink, part one. You should be able to find that on YouTube. Uh, go to YouTube and then type in in the search bar, fundmyhome.org, and you'll be able to search through the videos and find it there. And again, if you can't, you want to email me directly, 
<coughs> excuse me, scott.fomohome.org would be glad to get that for you. All right, now let me give you, I'm gonna give you a little bit of value, uh, practical hands-on value uh, while you're here uh, today as well. Um, just, uh, so, you know, we're talking about patterns and, you know, patterns are highly important and, you know, proven repeatable processes are really what is gonna lead us uh, to success. Uh, like Michael was just talking about here. So, you know, this is uh, one of my pages uh, that I manage. Uh, it's a Facebook page. And I started this page uh, just, uh, let's see, October 3rd or 2nd, something like that I started. It hasn't been that long, a month and a half maybe. And uh, I want you to know that, you know, again, you know, I, I'm out there as a leader. Uh, and I believe as, you know, leaders, this is what we're called to do. We're to, uh, you know, create a new path, if you will. Uh, in a path of success and then be able to share that with others and put together this pattern of things that work. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the course of my many years now on social media and especially in entrepreneurship and marketing is that, you know, we've got to, uh, first of all, we've got to have, uh, you know, good content that's going to draw people in. Uh, then we have to be able to keep them you know, in our circle of influence so that we can influence them, you know, with, with, with our opportunity. So, you know, Facebook and uh, in LinkedIn and some of these social media sites enable us to do that. So this page I started about a month ago and, you know, the, the phenomenal thing that I think is that I've been able to uh, get in just over a month. Um, you know, somewhere it's usually on here. Where is it? At? Oh, here we go. I've been able to get 160 people now that 157 that like this page, but more importantly, 160 people that are following this page. Okay. Now I've got on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, I've got nearly 5,000 uh, friends on my Facebook page and I've got about 480 maybe followers on my Facebook page. But I want to tell you, that that's been over the course of, I don't know, 20 years that I've been on Facebook uh, and, I, and I still only have 400 and some followers. Uh, but here I've been able to get 160 followers now liking my new, this is my site, by the way, it's getyourgrant.fomahome.org. Uh, but this is very important. So again, I'm, I'm trying to lay out a pattern for you to follow that you all, uh, you know, if you haven't done so already, you need to go out and get your own Facebook page. Uh, and it should be named something that's similar to uh, your, your passion, your opportunity, whatever you're calling your particular independent business uh, and or something creative <clears throat> and, and start to get a following. OK, so so that's one thing I want to show you uh, and, and you can do that. And now guess what? These 160 people that are now following me on or not me, but my my page are now my clients. So I've got an incredible opportunity here now to uh, continue to bring and, you know, Michael talked about the need to, and I like to think of it as three dimensions, the need to engage people three dimensionally uh, through vision, you know, through videos, through audio, you know, videos have audio and so do, you know, Facebook live events and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, so, and, and through feelings, through emotions, through motivation, you know, those types of things. And that's what we want to do. So, you know, again, just to give you a, a little bit of a value add. So, and by the way, these are, uh, these are our new corporate sponsors that we're picking up. And that's another pattern uh, that I can share with you now. I shared this yesterday. We did an impromptu uh, coaches call on Facebook Live. And I talked about an easy way for you to make an extra $100 a week by getting corporate sponsors. And, and I laid out uh, to those that were on the call yesterday how to do that. I'm doing it now. I, I've got seven corporate sponsors now. Okay, so if I can do it following this particular pattern. I'll show you the pattern and you just go out and do exactly what I did and you're, you should have the same results. Okay. So, you know, that's what I'm talking about here. So anyway, <clears throat> so we've got um, these, these incredible uh, funnels that we're putting together for everyone and Adele, I'm glad you're on a call. Welcome to the call. Uh, and uh, these funnels are available to you. Uh, if you haven't onboarded yet, you need to uh, a, a go to your email support at fomahome.org and tell them your name and your uh, associate number and tell them you, you'd like to onboard. And I don't care if you onboarded a year ago or six months ago, you need to do it again because uh, everything has gotten a lot better. And now we've got incredible uh, tools for you to be using. 
uh, in the form of these funnels and, and videos and things like that, uh, dozens and dozens of, of quality videos and funnels uh, that, that are available to all of you. So anyway, I want to show you uh, just you know how some of this stuff is working. So here's a post that I put up four hours ago. And again, this is on my Get Your Grant page. I got 160 followers on here. Quite a few of them are realtors. Now, I haven't boosted this post yet, but I can boost this now, pay a few dollars and, and really get out in front of hundreds or thousands of people. But check this out. So just a simple post. Hey, Florida Realtors, game changer. Click the link. Just something that's going to get their attention. And here's a brand new funnel that's available for all of you. Okay. And it, it says, you know, Florida Realtors, tired of giving away. This is so important right here. So again, we want to show people their pain, right? That exactly what Michael talked about. And, you know, it, it, it be able to make them feel the pain of giving away 50% of their commission fees because real estate agents uh, have to give their broker, they split the commissions on everything that they sell. So tired of giving away 50% of your commission fees to a broker? How would you like to receive 100% of the real estate commissions on every transaction you close? Is that not, is that not powerful? I mean, at FundMyHome.org, they can move their real estate license underneath our Fund My Home real estate company in Florida, and they're going to get 100% of the real estate commission on every transaction they close. That's huge. So, you know, and again, so now I'm, I'm sharing with them some of the benefits, you know, they, they, I'm showing them their pain and now we're showing them the benefits. Well, number one, they're going to get instant name recognition. FundMyHome.org is, is becoming one of the fastest growing uh, uh, real estate companies in the state of Florida. And you're going to see it really take off here uh, now that we've opened up our real estate, uh, uh, you know, opportunity. Okay, so. Uh, and number two, you can about close more transactions with our incredible nonprofit resources. And we get into a little bit of details of that. You're going to be surrounded by a team that brings prosperity by helping others succeed. You know, and again, that's what we're doing uh, throughout our prosperity project at FundMyHome.org. We want to help all of you succeed. And, th and these new realtors coming in to FundMyHome.org are going to be surrounded by an incredible team uh, and, and going to be able to uh, receive them some incredible benefits. So uh, here's some more. Uh, these are some of our awesome features uh, of this offer, building lasting relationships by providing customers with value, a prospect like a pro, because we're going to help them do that. we got a brand new construction initiative now that's live in Florida. We've got national builders on board. We've rolled out 11 counties just yesterday. Uh, you know, so they're, they're going to be able to you know, uh, sell new construction homes to their clients uh, through national builders. Uh, that's su such a powerful thing. Uh, there's a great video on here that tells the, them in a short two minute video uh, all about our realtor, uh, you know, opportunity that we have. Uh, it gives our talks about our nonprofit, uh, that we have a disruptive organization that moves home renters to home buyers. Uh, more great benefits. They get 100 percent commission. They can build a team of realtors. They get paid for their dead deals. You know what? what you know how much pain a realtor has and all these people that they that come their way that can't qualify for a loan, but they're so close, we can close those now and they can get paid. They can get paid for otherwise for a dead deal. Okay. So, you know, just can, again, just continue to show the benefits and in, in getting your attention. We've got our short doodle video on here and, and we're able to, to show them, you know, uh, lead them to discovery and, and hopefully get their contact information and get their interest and then, and be able to, uh, follow up with them. So again, there's a pattern here of, of funnels uh, and videos and the ability for us uh, with your executive assistant and the process that, that we've got in place for you to be able to start doing digital marketing. And you are now a digital marketing specialist. That's what your new title is at FundMyHome.org. And we're going to help you get there. So yeah, I hope today's uh, coaching session, uh, I, I would like to open this up for some discussion today, but I'm not going to do that. I just just so you know, reason being, I just got a call from uh, my my stepfather. My mom's not doing very well, uh, and I need to call there right away. So, um, you know, it could be something very serious. So, uh, but anyway, I appreciate uh, everyone being on the call today. Uh, I hope you got some value today. I know I did uh, in, in numerous areas already today. And uh, again, you can reach me at skyfomhome.org if you've got any specific questions or you need help specifically with anything. Be glad to help you with that. Uh, like I said, the, the, if you haven't done it yet, uh, get onboarded. Uh, you need to do that right away. Just uh, support at FundMyHome.org. Tell them you like to onboard. Uh, they're going to send you a calendar link. You choose the time uh, that's, that's uh, convenient for you. Get onboarded. 
uh, you're going to get updated. You're going to get your funnels. You're going to be able to get everything linked up to, to your uh, replicated website with your funnels like you're seeing here uh, and, and be able to start using these. Uh, and you're going to get you know off on a good start uh, following this pattern that we've laid out for you. OK, so thank you for being on the call today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, I pray that uh, God blesses your day and uh, that your time here at FunMyHome.org today was uh, well spent. Thank you.